Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today is going to be a bit of a more serious video um, in regards of all of the recent new releases from all the um, electric unicycle manufacturers. I thought I would bring out some sort of statement, some sort of uh, insight for you guys uh, to know where we are standing as UC users or UC lovers. Um, so yeah, and I wanted to take opportunity to use our channel and our beloved community to send a message to UC manufacturers and tell them actually what's up because maybe they don't, don't know, maybe they need some insight on what's happening with their wheels and what really we need as a community from um, electric wheels. So if you have also any comments on, the, on that, please feel free to um, uh, comment below. I won't even cut this video, I want to make it as, as transparent or honest as possible. And also give a like to give it a bit more exposure. Uh, with that said, uh, in the, I don't know, past year, or even two years, there's, there's been some new unicycles, as you probably might have guessed. Um, you know, in motion V11, V12, uh, S18, King Song, a bunch of Pigode wheels, um, also the new Veteran, Abrams, um, Veteran uh, Sherman, Max and um, other UCs, but uh, all of those new releases had some sort of flaws. Um, they either had you know, bearing problems, they, uh, they had a too small battery which was prone to cutting out if you lean too much, or um, I don't know, some problems with, um, with motherboards, overheating. So really it was, or it is, very difficult to choose a EUC for yourself as a device to use for your daily commute and um, and for your leisure time. So first up, I wanted to say what my idea is of a correct electric unicycle that I can recommend to you guys um, and that I would actually use. So maybe this also will give an idea uh, to the manufacturers about what they really need to improve. And also correct me if I'm wrong, comment below if you think it's any different. So I think first of all, main concern is safety, um, especially in the battery department. Uh, I know that cutouts can be bad too, you know, if you over lean the wheel, um, if there's some sort of malfunction in the wheel, but I think that on first place I would put the fire hazard um, because, oh, now there is a siren there, but I guess we have to go through. <laughs> uh, because if something happens to your wheel at home, it just starts catching fire, it's not only a danger to you, it's a danger to the inhabitants of the apartment and it might be also a danger to everyone in the building. So that's number one priority, safety, a good battery management system, good chargers, not crappy chargers like Gotway uses. Um, so that is what I would put on first priority, battery tech safety. And then of course also safety in regards of uh, safe use. So how much can you lean it? How much can you accelerate? Will it beep? Will it do something before you over torque it, uh, overpower it? Um, and safe limits for top speed according to also your weight and um, your you know, riding style. Basically, in my eyes, I shouldn't be the one that should be you know, responsible for um, the wheel, for, for, for a fall in, t in terms of, you know, going up a too steep incline or, I don't know, trying to accelerate, accelerate too hard. The wheel should stop me from that by doing a tilt back, by beeping, uh, by having a slight pedal dip. That's what uh, Kingstong does also and their wheels. Other wheels also have that. Basically, as a rider, I think I shouldn't be required to watch YouTube videos and to gain experience from falls or other stuff in order to, you know, safely use a wheel. Or it should be also in the instruction manual because manufacturers are, are you know, showing us more and more power, more and more performance. Um, but in the end, it's best to ride those wheels like Marty. <laughs> Electric Unicycles channel, uh, check it out. So, um, and I think it's difficult too because, you know, we have motorcycles, bicycles, cars. There's a, a huge load of you know, um, information and a huge load of um, tests required in order to bring such a vehicle into, you know, into our roads, into 
public space. And essentially what we're writing here are experiments. And as much as I, you know, a year or two ago, I was hyped about every new wheel, new wheels coming up, everything's super exciting. Um, and I thought that, you know, these are just works of art and these are extremely, you know, um, intelligent devices and, and so on. Now I more and more come to the conclusion that there is a lot of work to do. And the responsibility here is a bit different than, in, for, for example, you know, cars or trains, oh, trains or motorcycles, because there is essentially not any institution that keeps them accountable. We keep them accountable as a community. And then they need to go to the drawing board and tell them engineers what to do. And then they make a safe product, which is then verified by the community. And this is also the case because this is a very new sport. So I don't say that it's you know, all fault of manufacturers, but I also don't say it's all fault of the writers because um, it's a new technology. We are learning about it every day. Uh, but as back to the point of safety, I think that this is a criteria which should have the utmost um, utmost importance, which I think in the recent, in regards of the recent V12 issues and also three cutouts on this S20, which I'm going to talk about later, um, I feel like was a bit neglected. And also the safety, battery safety issue by Bigode, which still has loads of wheels um, out there in the market, which they don't care about and might be prone to a fire hazard. Um, so that's the first criteria, essentially. Sorry if I'm doing a lot of side thoughts, but hey, that's, a, that's, that's the beauty of an uncut video. Uh, the second thing I think should be torque, because you can't have everything. You can have either speed with a high speed motor, or you have torque with a high torque motor, or you can have just a huge battery like the veteran Sherman and then be good sort of with both. Uh, but especially for heavier riders, if the difference is, you know, 110 kilograms and 70 kilograms for a rider, then the 110 kilogram rider won't be able to achieve the same performance as the lighter rider. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that the wheel should be also dialed in for the weight. And even though it says it's allowed to 120 kilograms, maybe it's just not safe to do any sort of stuff that would be available for the 80 kilogram rider. Um, so that's another thing. And I think that those safety margins, especially in terms of torque, are very important because speed, you know, you can always go slower. But in terms of acceleration, when you get comfortable, you are the throttle. Your leaning is a, is a throttle. And if there isn't enough torque, enough power in the wheel, I'm sorry, you overpowered it. In a scooter, it would be just a limit. Um, or if you would be going up a hill, it would just stop. But on a wheel, it will tilt forward and you will fall. So the responsibility here is much bigger. So torque, and the third thing <coughs> that I think is of utmost importance is range. And as I was also doing um, uh, some data statistics before, uh, I think that um, range is one of the key elements for every one of us. Um, so that's that. And in, in general, of course, quality and longevity of a device should be important. Because it doesn't matter if you like sell a, a product that is not reliable, the customer will, will not go back to that. Um, they will probably search for another band later. I think it's not something that is sustainable to make low quality pro products. And I think it's also bad to lure people in with a um, lower price, especially not experienced riders, to then just find out that, I don't know, on their RS there was a loose cable they had a bounce and then they had a cutoff, which is very dangerous. So I guess those were sort of five things. I'll just check real quick if it's still recording. So that, these are the criteria. And now I wanted to say a bit about every manufacturer and problems in every wheel. Um, I will do another because battery safety statement because I'm still trying to find out what's causing the main issues, fires on wheels and how to prevent them. But it's not only, not only Bigode that has problems. And, you know, I, I thought, I was comfortable with the thought that, you know, just Bigode is the problem or, I don't know, going uphill for an extended, extended period of time uh, on, on the Sherman. But also King Song and In Motion has their problems. So I'll just go through with those uh, wheels some of the more popular models and say what's up. So 
Um, so you know basically when, when you will be buying stuff. With the V11 basically they rushed or they made a premiere a bit quickly, not enough QC issues, uh, I mean QC tests, and then bear problems with bearings, problem with suspension, very early, but problem with suspension, um, too weak motherboard uh, for like, I don't know, heavier riding, also depends on which one you get, um, and I don't know, sort of flimsy components. With the V12 now, there was a bigger issue, and as much as I love the V12, and my model was great, it cannot be accepted, or it's not acceptable to make a wheel that has some sort of fault in uh, in the motherboard and just give it out to people. And I think that still in motion did the right thing to inform people about it and do some sort of recall. And I mean, their tests kind of questionable, but they're doing something. They're, try they're trying to figure it out. And then at a later date to um, fix the motherboard. And although there are issues, I think that still. It's correct that they inform it and they try to figure it out. Um, nevertheless, this is the issue. On basically, also every other unicycle rims are pretty weak, so you know, popping curbs on low pressure always sort of a risk. And if you find a pothole, you might have a problem. So in every you see, I think the rims should be stronger, um, like on bicycles, basically on more motorcycles. Uh, and when it comes to other in-motion wheels, on V8Fs being a bit too weak uh, and on, for heavier riders might cut out, might not, I know, and that's that. On, on, on V10s, I basically burned every in-motion wheel, V5, V8, V10. Uh, I didn't burn the V11, V12 because I sort of know what to do there, not to like overpower it for a long time. Might have burned it, I don't know. But for my usual style of riding, if I don't want to kill it, I won't. But with the usual style of riding with the V5, V8, V10, probably I will. And also there are issues with pedals, um, pedals breaking. So, so that's that. And I, just, I think I just want to lay this now on the table because maybe the companies don't acknowledge, they think they can just swipe it under the rug, but they can't because we're here and we're here to tell them about it, to improve the products, to improve the safety and well-being of the community. So then we move to the King Song. And I think that the sort of last King Song wheel that was very solid for every type of rider was the 18XL and the 16X. And from that it went a bit downhill with the S18 having a bit of a small battery. You can adjust to it, you can ride slowly, but if you're a heavier rider, uh, and of course first issues with, um, with the suspension. And yeah, my friend also had some issues with the S18 and with the S12. And so, wait. I know like how common all of these problems are, maybe you just comment below how it is, but I think it definitely wasn't as solid of the wheel, especially in the further batches as the 16X. 16X also had some cutouts at the beginning, but I think they fixed that relatively quickly and now it's fine. 16X also has you know, problems with washers or screws getting loose after a while, and then your wheel starts vibrating. You need to just tighten those screws. So very much a theme in all of the EUCs is they work first very well, and then after a while, st stuff can break. You ride a bit in rain, stuff gets inside, um, bearings break, uh, you you know do a bit of off-roading, screws get loose, if there's no Loctite and other stuff. So that's why I also do reviews over an extended period of time. I can do you know 4,000 kilometers review, reviews on every wheel, but I try to at least get 300, 500 kilometers to see, to see what's up. Um, oh yeah, but 18 XL, some water might get in, but 18 XL is quite a, solid wheel. 18L had some cutouts if you just overpower it at high speed, but uh, not like also the warning should be there, but I feel like, especially that now I'm also riding one, the 16 x and the 18L, kind of fine. And now with the S20, and that's probably something that also caught your eye before, there were already three cutouts on this wheel. Um, there was one cutout Kuji Rolls had, and I had approval to say to you guys about it. At 20, 30 kilometers an hour, he tried a full lean, maybe a bit stronger than on the Sherman, and the wheel just cut off without any warning. Very dangerous. Um, the second cutout was in France by Mathieu Cotti. Very experienced rider on a Sherman, more than 10 or 20,000 kilometers. Over, like, tried to accelerate at 65 kilometers an hour, probably also over torqued it, and he had a cutout. Luckily, also to Koji Rolls, he's also fine, but Matthew just had a dislocated shoulder, but 
yeah, that's that also sucks. It's not really the fault of the rider. It's the fault that they accelerated and the f they thought the machine is capable and the machine wasn't capable and didn't give any warnings about it. And I think this is the problem about it. And the third one probably you saw at the EVs demo. So I think very much with those prototype wheels that we get, especially the Kingsong S20, um, there's a problem that we just get unfinished products. We are not even beta testers, we are alpha testers. And honestly, if you give us that much performance and that much ability, and there is yet so much danger involved too, I think those machines like for extreme testing either should be tested on really empty roads and stuff, really low traffic hours, or on tracks, because it just gets very dangerous with those speeds. Um, so, yeah, that sucks a lot. What the problem is, I don't know. Uh, I think just that the wheel just has a battery of four parallels, um, not enough batteries to, um, to provide the torque. It's essentially just 3,000 watts, around 3,000 watts that can come from the battery to the motor, uh, to the motherboard, um, compared to, for example, 7,500 that is from the battery pack of the Sherman with the 18650 cells. Don't want it to get too technical, up something essentially uh, they made a wheel they made their claims most you know sports wheel most performance wheel from King Song people bought into it people had experience with Sherman's Gotways no warnings and that happens I'm very curious of course to check out the S20 myself and I'm you know not crossing it off the list but all of these you know um, the the I don't know, it sort of feels like crash test dummies. And as, as, as much as I loved testing wheels first, I'm happy that I don't get the S20 first, because now I know, well, I could have hurt myself. And it's terrible, really terrible, that those people hurt themselves. They don't deserve this. Machines should be just tested thoroughly for this sort of stuff. They can test with some sort of machines. What amount of lean can you get? How heavy of a rider can do what? And then those flaws would be fixed, but they weren't. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's that. Um, they also changed the tilt back to make it very mellow at the end, uh, at the top speed, and maybe that's something that happens and then people can't feel the tilt back. Uh, it depends on rider, of course, but... I just think those issues shouldn't be part of people testing them, and especially, I think that it's wrong, to show people just you know out there on demo days those wheels because then they just can get get hurt because this is not a fully ripe product. So that's up with the S20. Um, let's move on to I don't know veteran. With veteran, there was just a bit of the issue with with rims breaking. Um, I know a lot of people. <laughs> there's even a meme page about it. That, that, that broke the that broke the rim. There was a temperature sensor in the wrong spot on the motherboard, so after extended period of time of, of climbing, it would just fry without warning. Um, and that's a, like most amount of issue um, I remember. So maybe a high torque version of that would be better for the majority of people. Um, but you know, with the Abrams, way more issues. With the you know, check out my video for that, I guess. Uh, but um, there was already a cutout on this one while accelerating uh, and yeah, that also sucks. You can check it out on Instagram um, and you know, the shell is open from the inside, questionable waterproofing, bearings broke. Um, so this is also very much not a product tested for extended use and with limits set, I don't know, I'm still testing it, but um, I think just the battery is too small for this very heavy motor. Uh, big battery sags or maybe the voltage uh, isn't shown right. I don't know. But very much this wheel feel, feels like a less refined product than the Sherman. Um, so that's that. And with uh, Big Ode, biggest issues by far is the lineup of RS and Nikola and MSP uh, with fires. Um, and although they might work fine for thousands of kilometers and their boards are super strong they could t take a beating especially the HT ones um, yeah there's been over 20 fires with them and Bigode still to this day although I messaged them don't know what the problem is and they keep getting new wheels out they don't care what what happened before 
And I really think that this is crucial because there is wheels out there already that are maybe prone to that. And the e-wheels made a recall of those batteries, so that's great. But there's more wheels out there in the world like that. Um, might be the charger that charges a bit higher than the voltage that is um, recommended for the battery cells um, for extended period of time and then the cells cell structure crystallizes and might lead to a fire. Maybe it's the BMS being stuck on some series of cells, uh, but this is a huge problem. Naturally, they also had issues with your waterproofing, riding in rain, um, flimsy pieces, not correct QC. Um, the list goes on and on. Um, but what they do do, what so what what the sort of the priority is with their wheels is that um, the way they produce them, sort of, is that they want to pre prevent cutouts. So if you over torque it, um, I mean, if you accelerate hard, you still have the power, but in the long run, might be bad to the battery. And although they're better, getting better with that, there's still loads of wheel wheels out there like the Nikola and MSP that don't have these safe limits. And naturally, as a rider, you should ride safe, but the consequence of not riding safe should be a limit on the wheel and not a fire in your house, possibly. I also don't want to, you know, scare you guys. It's very rare of an event, uh, but it's still out there and the number isn't one. It's starting to get into the tents. So that's that. Um, so. <laughs> I don't know, I wanted to just give you an update of that and I think wheel manufacturers, you need to just stop, take a break to figure out the engineering part on the wheels um, because what you're doing now is not good in the long run, especially with the QC issues. To up the QC game, to use better battery cells, high discharge cells, I keep telling that already for half a year or a year almost, that the battery cells are using high capacity cells they're not good for constant changes for uh, power. For slow riding, yeah, fine. But for the performance aspect we have now on wheels and why we use them also, no. Samsung 40Ts, other high discharge cells. And I think that the batteries should not up their voltage. I think they should have more parallels. And because this is what gives you the range and this is what gives you the torque, sort of the power available. Um, so yeah, 100 volt and more like 6p, 8p, 10p, uh, 10 parallels should be, in my opinion, what we should be start striving for in the um, performance segment or more efficient motors, more high torque motors, because then the strain on the motor won't be so high, not high speed. Um, so that's that. Of course, more safety, um, the good chargers, for example, the charger now on the S18, should be changed in the production model, but what they gave now doesn't even charge to 126 volts. Um, good BMSs, and yeah. Just prioritize quality, rider safety, um, and, I don't know, well-being of the product in the lo long run, just forgot the word, over cheap products that will break and there will be you know, not good in the long run or even hazardous. And especially also with the new demo units to make sure that they're actually safe to, for riders to test. So I hope you liked this video. Um, I don't know if it was well structured, was just sort of a train of thought I had here. Um, so again, leave a like if you liked it. If you have anything to comment about, comment below. Um, and I'll keep riding. I love wheels and I think we all do. And I think we would be happy to just buy something, even if it's a bit of a higher cost, that is 100% good and that we know that in a year or two or after 5, 10, 15,000 kilometers will still work, then something in between that might break and even hurt us or be a bit dangerous. So yeah, um, cheers guys, <laughs> see you soon.